Professor Jenny Hocking argued that the Queen has been the monarch for nearly 70 years, which means people naturally have a fondness towards her. For many people, she has been the only monarch and has been seen to do her duty for so many years. In contrast, Prince Charles will be something novel and will necessarily be on the throne for a much shorter time due to his age when becoming king. He is also a somewhat controversial figure, having expressed his viewpoint on certain issues, and having been through a tumultuous marriage and divorce with Princess Diana. However, Professor Hawking argued that Charles's gender will also play a part in the perception of him having power over Australia, potentially triggering resistance. The historian told Express.co.uk, There is a question as to how things shift in terms of support for a republic once our monarch ceases to be the Queen and becomes King Charles. I think a bit of a sleeper issue here is that there is not just a generational question. In other words, we've got many generations, several generations now, for whom the Queen has been the only monarch and so we do tend to see her in a favourable light, someone we're familiar with even though increasingly we are aware of the interventions in political matters that have come from the crown, during, her reign. But nevertheless shifting to King Charles there's a sense, first feel, in which because of the gender issues together with the novelty of having a new king, the sense of power over us becomes much more apparent. And I think that in turn raises then questions about what role does a monarchy have in Australia when we are no longer part of an imperial structure. The interventions, Professor Hocking was referring to are related to revelations made in The Guardian this year that the Queen has personally vetted over 1,000 laws during her reign that related to her or her property. On one particular occasion, the Queen's team lobbied for a change in the draft of a law intended to increase transparency that would allow Her Majesty to keep her finances private. Professor Hawking was also referring to her own court win last year regarding the palace letters, which saw the release of correspondence between the Queen, her former private secretary and the former Governor-General of Australia in the lead-up to the dismissal. The dismissal was a constitutional crisis in Australia in 1975 when then-Governor-General Sir John Kerr dismissed the Prime Minister, Gough Whitlam, and had opposition leader Malcolm Fraser take charge. Debate has raged ever since as to whether Sir John had a right to do this and whether the Queen had any prior knowledge as to his intentions. The palace letters were key to this mystery and, having now read the documents, Professor Hocking claims they reveal the Queen did know about Sir John's intentions beforehand. Professor Hocking, who is a member of the National Committee of the Australian Republic Movement, argued that another issue for Prince Charles is Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's interview earlier this year. She argued that he does not come out well from the interview, and that it highlighted the dysfunction within the family and institution. She said, I think it's very sad to hear Harry say he felt his father had stopped taking his calls. And I think this is where the element of family dysfunction merges with a sense of dynastic dysfunction within the monarchy itself and, again, adds to the sense that we ask, why do we continue to have our residual connection to that? Meghan and Harry's interview with Oprah Winfrey sent shockwaves around the world.